My name is Jacob Young. The title of my article is Delinquency as a Consequence of Misperception, Overestimation of Friends' Delinquency and Mechanisms of Social Influence, to be published in the Journal of Social Problems. The study looks at the accuracy of individuals' views of their peers' delinquency. And what we find is that individuals, one, overestimate the extent of delinquency in their peer group, and two, that those overestimates or those inaccuracies influence one's own delinquent behavior. Well, basically the way this works is in sociology, there's something called Thomas's theorem, and it's the idea that although perceptions may not be real, they're real in their consequences if people believe them. And so building off that idea, we look at the role of these inaccurate beliefs, and that even though an individual's peer group might not engage in uh, the amount of delinquency that they believe, those beliefs, even if they are inaccurate, have consequences for the individual's behavior. So we look at uh, data from the Netherlands, which has collected in 10 schools of nearly 1,200 um, youth between the ages of 12 and 18. The delinquent behaviors we looked at were theft, uh, minor theft, and violence. So engaging in uh, so stealing and uh, getting in fights with other kids. So there's three key pieces here of a self-report questionnaire. So they report on their own behavior, their own delinquency. They report on what they think their friends do. So questions asking them, what behaviors your friends engage in. And then they also report social network data, so they tell us who their friends are. So we can use those three pieces of information to find out what types of behaviors the friends are actually engaging in and how that's different from their own beliefs about what their friends do. So the innovation here is that we have two pieces of information. We have the individual's beliefs about their friend's behavior, and then we have the actual behavior reported by those friends. So we can create a misperception measure, or the overestimation of friend's delinquency, by differencing those two variables. And that gives us this idea of how much the individual thinks their peers engage in delinquency and how much they actually do. An advantage of social network data is, is really twofold, and one is that we get a better measure of individuals' uh, perceptions. We can actually compare those with what people say they actually do. The second one is that we get uh, a structural perspective. We get to see the entire network and how the position of an individual in that network matters. So it's not an individualistic focus, it gives us some context about the network that individuals embedded in. Well, the role of context has always been central to analyses in criminology, and this is where the field really begins, is with um, urban areas and focusing on how the ecology of context influences one's own behavior and neighborhood crime rates. But for a long time, that was really black box. So how exactly that context matters, particularly with social relationships. And now with the availability of data, and the availability of uh, statistical models for analyzing those data, we have a greater understanding of what exactly that social context means. So what it means to be densely embedded in a friendship group or at the periphery of a friendship group. We actually have measures of those things rather than just the simple concepts. So what we find is two key pieces. One is we look at what influences overestimation. And we find that youth who engage in delinquency have attitudes supporting delinquency and are pressured by their friends to engage in delinquency tend to have inflated views about how often their own friends engage in delinquency. The second piece looks at the consequences of those misperceptions on one's behavior. And we find that first, individuals who have inflated beliefs about friends' delinquency tend to engage in more delinquency. And among those who feel pressure from their friends to engage in delinquency are unpopular in their school and care about what others think of them are much more likely to be influenced by those misperceptions. We replicate past research that finds that individuals who engage in a particular behavior tend to think that behavior is more prevalent, something called a uh, false consensus effect. So we find that in our data. The new finding here is the consequences of those misperceptions on one's own behavior. So this research contributes to a growing concern over how you actually deal with delinquency, particularly in a school setting. And so uh, several studies have found that programs that try to give kids information about how prevalent certain behaviors are are much more effective. Now this is in contrast to programs that try to uh, use scare tactics to uh, convince people that they shouldn't engage in these behaviors because they're very prevalent and they're very bad for you, and that these types of programs only feed into those misperceptions. And so better policy tries to provide more accurate information uh, about the prevalence of something. 
And that's the difference is uh, the D.A.R.E. program is um, don't do these things because they're awful and that type of stuff will happen versus, um, for example, new smoking campaigns and uh, drinking campaigns are really pointed out that, you know, most people don't get really drunk and most people don't smoke. And so if kids know that, then there's not this kind of belief that that's the social norm, that's what I should do. It's, it's the accuracy of what other people do because knowing about what all other people do, is, it's difficult to figure out that information. And so it's almost a um, coordination of information um, type of approach. The one follow-up here is that uh, a novel finding is that this misperception is that they vary across different people. And it's, again, it's those people who are unpopular, who feel pressure and who really want to fit in, that those misperceptions really influence their behavior. So looking at programs that try to uh, provide more information and recognizing that the effectiveness of those programs may differ based on the social position of an individual in their school or in their friendship group. The next step also is to look at different types of behavior. We looked at a very limited set of delinquent behaviors. And so the scale of um, misperception may differ across different types of behavior. And our results may be sensitive to just the type of behaviors we investigate.